Randolph. Ken Simmons talking to you from Randolph Nike Missile Site. That is it used to be 50 years ago. This is the anniversary. And we're gonna take you on a tour, but before I go any further, I wanna welcome my old friend and wreck on tour, Bobby Bond. And what a long winter it was. Yes, it has been. This is Henry Cook, of course you know that. I don't have to tell you. Where are you taking us today, Henry? Today, we're gonna to go see a bunch of different places. I've got a folder full of information, of pictures, of maps, about Randolph 50 years ago, about the Army, about Randolph being on the front line of the Cold War. Oh, we're gonna see this site, but first, I wanna take us up to the Chickatawbit Hill Nature Center, uh, as it's known today. Of course, 50 years ago, it served a much different purpose. Yes, it did. Chickatawbit it was not a nature center when I was a young man, but that's another show entirely. Okay, kick off your shoes, get yourself a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage, and Henry, let's go. Let's go. Henry, I haven't the vaguest idea where we are. Please tell me. Well, Ken, we're on top of a hill, as you can plainly see from all the walking we've yes, done. Yes, yes. This is the Chickatawbit Hill Nature Center in Canton. And Chickatawbit Hill Nature Center. Now, why are we historically visiting a nature center? Well, because today is the 50th anniversary of Randolph's place in the Cold War, and this is a part of it. Uh, wait a minute now, wait a minute. You're telling me that a na nature reserve is part of Han uh, Randolph's history? Just tell me, I explain. Well, well, if you give me half a chance, okay, Ken, sorry, I, I'll I'm do sorry, very, that sorry. very thing. I'm sorry. We're, we're here at the uh, part of the Nike missile site oh. and that was established here in 1954. You mean this is where running shoes were first made? No, 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 no. Oh, not that Nike. Not that kind of Nike. Oh. Nike. Nike was also the Greek goddess of victory. I never and right knew. After, right after World War II, the, uh, the Russians were in the, uh, the Cold War with us. I remember that probably better than you. I suspect you do. Yes. But we had to uh, defend ourselves against Russian nuclear bombers we, and yeah, we who sure were did. threatening to attack Boston and New York, or so we thought. And the idea was that if we had a ring of defenses around Boston and other major cities, that this would be a way of keeping the, the Russians from getting at us. Well, now, if that isn't the doggonest explanation I ever heard, that's so clear, even I understand it. I, well, I hope so. <laughs> this, but, so this was a missile base. Well, this was part of the missile base. Okay. Now, um, I've learned a lot about this recently in that uh, this was the command and control center for the missiles, which were actually located off of High Street in Randolph. Now, these and, buildings, they were here? They were here, they were built in the, the fall of 1954. And I understand uh, from uh, Steve Hutchinson from Mass Audubon that he's gonna meet us and take us into some of them in a little bit. Oh, that's great. But uh, we, can, we can take a walk around the grounds here initially. So in future years, even though 50 years is a long time, but 50 years from now, this will be like a Revolutionary War site or a Civil exactly. War site. Well, think of it like uh, Fort Warren is to Boston. Oh, okay, uh, that's good. It, that's a good Fort analogy. Warren protected Boston during the, the Civil War from attack by the Confederates. This was, in its way, it was the modern day version of a fort. Oh, for God's sake. Except okay. they, they ringed all around Boston. There were 12 Nike missile sites around Boston, each intended to, uh, as a last ditch effort, to stop a Russian bomber that might try to attack uh, the Boston area. Oh, my gracious, that's, that, I see, I never knew that. I've lived here all my life, I never knew that. These are tough stairs here. Oh, Henry, this has got to be, the, the people at home now will see where we are and what we're going to see, and holy mackerel, look at that view. Isn't that remarkable, wowie, Ken? Wowie, wowie, wowie. I never saw anything like that in my life. And I've been to Chickatawpet a few times, I yeah. must tell you. This is just fantastic. Well, if we, and you see how close we are to Boston. Yeah. Now, yeah. if you extend our view off to the other side of Boston and by an equal amount, there were other Nike missile sites. Uh, on the other side? On the other side of Boston. Okay. There were some over in Framingham, Natick. There were some out over towards uh, Hull be... and, and Hingham area. There was also, the nearest site to us was probably just to the east of us over in Weymouth. Over this, in this direction? Over yeah. this direction. Holy But Michael, when you is, stand is... up here, we can also look back and we can see uh, not only Boston behind us, 
but we can see all the countryside around us. And when you stop and consider, in 1955, when this site was activated as part of the missile defense system, this was an area that they could see out over Boston. Uh, they, could, they could track Russian bombers by radar, but they could also probably see them if, uh, yeah. if well, push came you, to show. You know, you, you've piqued my interest. Now that I know this is not a place where they made shoes, mm -hmm. this is actually a Nike site. This is Who a, ran it? Was it the Army? The it was, well, it was, was built by the Army, and it was manned by uh, both the Army at various times and the National Guard. Oh, and okay. this this would have been the command and control center. These buildings over that we have below us here were part of the command and control center. Now the way the Nike missiles operated, you, you're talking about those buildings right over there, the, the brown buildings. The, the brown buildings yeah. and the one like just barracks. on. The, they look like barracks buildings. Yeah. And we have a, I have with me Ken in my little folder. I have a, a, a picture from 1956. Oh yes. Uh, from the Department of Defense. It's declassified, so it's okay for us to look at it. Right. Uh, now is that here? Is that's that, here. That's, that's here. a view of uh, the site, looking off towards uh, Great Blue Hill. I see it now. Yeah, I see it now. You I move see. it that way. I see it. See, we can. Yeah. yeah. And here are the two buildings right down here. We yep. have yep. two buildings. These were probably part of the uh, the uh, the radar uh, buildings. That's incredible. That's but incredible. Uh, if we step over here, if you if we look right over to our left, yep. down downhill, mm -hmm. looking over back towards Randolph, we can see over far to our left. We can see the the, the green water tower sticking up up on Tower Hill where we've been in the past. Is that Tower Hill? That That's green Tower water? Hill over there. Hardly looks like a little blip, does I it? I know it. I know it. This is unbelievable. I thought this is so great. But if we look just off to our left about 8 o'clock, okay. through the trees, yeah. over the hill, yeah. uh, you can see, and if we look at it in this, this photograph, we can see, we can see the, the brand new Route 128 going by below us. And of course, this is an aerial view from the Department of Defense, so you can see the distances better. Now, when were these pictures taken? What year? About 1955. 55. 55, okay. 56. So that's 50 years ago, yeah. So it's 50 years ago. Yeah. Route 128, Route 28 heading south, which extends off just, just below us, heading up towards uh, Crawford Square, over okay. that away. All right. All right. And so just about 8 o'clock from our viewpoint, just beyond those two big pine trees, is where the the launch site was. Is that we're going to go there? Well, yeah, we're going to go there in, yeah. in a little while. But uh, you know, when I found out about this site, the question arose in my mind: Well, why have two sites so far apart like that? It yeah. seemed like it'd be awful yeah. complicated. Yeah. The reason was that because of the nature of radar. Of course, w radar comes into being in World War II, as, as you're right. only too yeah. well aware. Yeah. And it was, uh, they had to keep a separation between the actual launch site and the tracking site. This site would not only uh, fire the missiles, it would also track the incoming bombers. And the way the Nike missiles worked was that they would sight in on the bomber coming, in, coming down the coast from uh, over Canada. They would uh, fire a missile, and actually the missile had radar in it, and they would steer it by the radar, but they would steer it from one of these buildings down here. Wow. Even back then they could do that. I, I thought well, was... today, today it's all in one. It's all incorporated right into the missile, and they, they can program the missile to home right in on the target. Yeah. So, Ken, coming down the steps now, I suddenly realize we're on one of the pads where the uh, radar stood. Oh, no kidding. See yep. this great big concrete pad? Yeah. We got this one, two, yep. and a third pad over there. Yeah, we sure this do. Is, this is where the radar dish would have sat, scanning the horizon, looking out for Russian bombers, and it was also the means by which they could guide the missile in towards its target if they had Isn't to. Isn't that something? I'm so glad you noticed that. that oh, important. so am I, yeah. because the only other sites, uh, there are other pads, as I was mentioning, up top, there are other pads out just beyond here, out by the picnic pavilion. That all carried radar. They all carried radar, yeah. and they would have had them in, in sort of an array, rather like stereo. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that you could have a, a better view of the distance and kind of sight in. And I suspect when they fired the missiles, it helped them guide the missiles in against their target. Wow. 
You know, you people sitting at home, I can remember back at this time and before this time when we had practice to escape an atomic a bomb attack. Mm -hmm. We were in school, we were advised to dive under the under the desks. The duck and cover. Yeah, yeah duck and cover. Uh, that was very, very interesting, Henry. I, I, you know, when we first, you first said the Nike site mm -hmm. and the history involved, I said, gee, that's gotta be dull. But already I'm excited. You did it again. Well, we're, you did we're, it again. we're gonna see even more because we're yeah. gonna go into this, the we dining haven't... hall here. Uh, Stephen Hutchinson, who is the, the uh, director of the nature programs here for the Blue Hills, has agreed to meet us and tell us a little bit about this building and what they do here today. Oh, yes, and I think that's Stephen Hutchinson now. How are you? Hi, Mr. Ken Simmons. Steve, Henry Cook, pleased Hi, to meet you. Henry. How Thank are you? you. Thank you for opening up the site today. This is, yeah. this is terrific. Happy to do it. Yeah. Now, is this site normally open to the public? This site's not normally open to the public. Uh, this site is run by the Blue Hills Trailside Museum mm -hmm. and uh, owned by the Department of Conservation and Recreation. It's normally closed, but we do run a variety of uh, environmental education programs mm -hmm. out of this site. Uh, the big one being our summer camp. Oh really? Now when does that take place? The summer camp starts June 27th and runs through September 2nd mm -hmm. and we can have up to 64 children here per wow. week. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, yeah. What ages? Ages four and a half through 14. And, chaperoned uh, of course. Chaperoned, yeah. We yeah. have wonderful counselors that are uh, college educated. And, Very good. Uh, you know, is there a charge for that, Steve? There is. Uh, we, we do charge for the program. If anybody's interested okay. in it, they can contact the museum. Terrific. Uh, well, we can, have them, we can have them contact the museum about the summer program. But in the meantime, uh, thank you for letting us come into some of the buildings and take a look around. I understand it looks very much like a dining hall, or uh, uh, I see it's a dining room today. Uh, do you know anything about this, whether it was the original mess hall for this site? or? As far as I know, it was the original uh, mess hall, mm -hmm. dining area of the site. I don't believe the kitchen's been changed very much. No, it looks, I, looks very much like uh, many a dining hall I've been through on different occasions. And again, Ken, the construction yes. of this building, it's a cinder block building, yeah. like so many that, that you see from this vintage. And also look at the fact of how they built the, the main carrying beam. Yeah, it's all sistered there. All sistered up. Yeah. That way you wouldn't have to uh, haul any great big beams up. And look at the, uh, I'm, uh, I hate to paint, point this out, but look at the paint job on that. It mm -hmm. looks like it was done yesterday, was it? It was done very recently. Was it? Yeah. It's a beautiful paint job. You people sitting at home, I hope you can see it well because it's very, very well done. I was in the service, and this is very typical of what a mess hall would look like. I can see long tables mm -hmm. here and benches and that kind of thing. I'd like to take a look at the kitchen, Henry. You would? Yes. Well, let's, let's go have a look at that yeah. and see what we can see. Well, this certainly looks like a kitchen, Ken. This you know? looks like a kitchen that I would have pulled KP on in many, many times. However, I think this equipment is a little bit updated from when I was in the service, which was during the Civil War or soon after. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, but it, it, the place is beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so clean, it's yeah. well kept. Our caretaker, Mike McWay, does a wonderful job keeping mm -hmm. everything up to that's, spot. Is he that's here every day? Or? Yeah, he lives on site. He oh, he lives right here? Yeah. Wow. He has an apartment across the way. Oh, my and goodness. he stays here. And uh, during the summer, our summer camp staff that lives up here at the Hill also uses this very kitchen. Uh, oh, oh there okay. There. You got now, me excited. Do you, now, are the campers here as day campers or do they stay? I see a dormitory down the hill. Yeah. We do have uh, day campers, uh, but for our order campers, we do offer one overnight and they do stay in the dormitory okay. for that night. Very good. Can we see the dormitory? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, so let's go. Excited. Let's I'm go. So excited. I'm so I get excited so easily at my age. It's unbelievable. That was great, Steve. After you, Mr. Okay, Cook. thank After you. you, Steve. Thank you. All right. And I'm glad to now, see Mother Nature is cooperating with us this, this time around. This is supposed to be spring, you know. It is. I'm freezing my decibels off. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Yes, it is a it's gorgeous a day. Time of year to be up. Now, is this the dormitory you were talking yeah, about? This or? is the dormitory down here, just past our picnic area. And these are former barracks. I well, I think that's, that's uh, what they appear to be on the, on the, the maps uh, that, that we've got of the site. It sure looks that way. And, uh... and they're located up downhill because remember, we found the radar dish uphill and that would be located closest to where you'd have to keep all your electronic gear. 
Oh, yeah, I suppose right. That's right. these people would be down below the brow of the hill. The other thing, Ken, just as a, from an architectural standpoint, is notice each one of these buildings that they've got a little porch that comes out. Yeah. Imagine being yeah. here, manning this radar station in January. Oh, don't say that. Uh, I, no, oh, I've, been, say I've, that. I've been up here hiking in, in the dead of winter, oh. and oh. I know how the wind whistles up around this hill, and it... Uh, it can be a lot of fun. Yeah, this is very. It's close a wonderful to place to go hiking and snowshoeing and, and all those things. Is it? And but you just have to be properly dressed. How high are we here? Do you know? I don't know. Oh. I don't know the height of chicken. Okay. No, we're well, we're locked. No smoking in buildings. So that's a good rule. I like that rule. So this building was used as a dormitory today, and I'm presuming it was probably used judging by its proximity to the other buildings as a, a barracks building. Now you said this wing over here in front of us is, I mean, is be, largely be, unaltered. Before we go in there, mm -hmm. I, look at this. Was this done by anybody here, Steve? Yeah, the, the, this mural as well as uh, this one on owl species were both done by Mike McQuaid, the caretaker. No up kidding. Top of Hill. Yeah. He's got a lot of talent. He's a wonderful artist. And this is what? This is, uh, tell me, Henry, this, this is a pencil thing or charcoal or? I'm not sure what the medium is, but but again, it's a, a beautiful rendering of talking about the history, about what life was like here in the Blue Hills, what the native peoples were doing here, uh, and this, anywhere is from from 300 to 3,000 years ago. Yes, it's unbelievable. It's Isn't it? the Massachusetts people, the people mm -hmm. that our state is named after. Exactly. Right here in the Blue Hills. And this is oil, I would assume. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that something? Many this, of the owl species found right here in the Blue Hills. This man has a talent. Oh, that that is remarkable. Yeah. Incredibly young man, the oh. old. old uh, he's, not well, old. he's in his late fifties. Yeah, that's so young. Not old, that's young. very very good. Uh -huh. Well, let's let's have a look at the uh, the dorm rooms here. And that's great. Just to give folks Happy an Easter. idea oh, of what the what army barracks were like in in the, the early fifties. This yeah, well, I got to tell you something, Henry. This ain't like any barracks I was ever in. This is oh, beautiful. Really? Well, it, it looks pretty good. <laughs> barracks and, I was in. And, well, and, and you'll notice it's pretty well maintained. So Yes, it is. We're so. in the process of repainting the ceilings. Mm -hmm. need a little work, but uh, we are redoing those. This, I mean, again, you have very similar rooms along either side of the hallway. And again, the... All right, this is, this, is, uh, this is a beautiful room. This is nothing like any barracks I've ever stayed in. So I'm sure that they must have refurbished it or revamped it or something. Yeah, a little, little bit. We didn't have three-man rooms. We had a big, long hallway with 100 guys, <laughs> and half of them in the undress and half of them dressed. And, well, but it was uh, nothing like this. This is very nice. I'm very impressed with this. Well, now each of our summer camp staff gets a room to themselves. And when does that campers. start? One more time, real quick. When does that start? June? June 27th two. is the first day through September 2nd. Okay. You can sign up for a one or two week session, depending on the child's age. And they, they, to get in touch with that or to find out more about that, you they call. Can, yeah, contact the Blue Hills Trail Center. And that would be in the book. Yeah, 617 333 0690, and you can dial me directly at extension 227. When they come here now, oh, Steve, would you give classes, uh, wildlife classes, nature classes? Well, for what? our summer camp, it's yeah. uh, nature discovery, and they uh, discover nature through oh. hands on activities. Mm -hmm. They uh, play nature non competitive games as well as do crafts. Terrific. As well as well, bike. Ken, before we go, I just spotted something in the other room. I got to go see here. Uh oh, oh, the men's room. No, 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 oh. no. This is oh, far more interesting than. Than that it's <laughs> I have one of these living out in my backyard not a display case but oh that's a possum it's a possum yeah. it is indeed oh isn't these that these guys are found all over the blue hills oh. a very unique animal so. he's beautiful he's beautiful well he's beauty is in the eye of the I know I know they're a little they can be a little feisty yeah. now I see a bird here too I'm not sure what sort of looks looks like uh, a toy what's a toy I never heard of a toy it's it's a bird. It's a bird from my field. Well, I, yeah, we're looking at a bird. I but, assume it's a bird. But you see a lot of these up on uh, Hemingway Hill and Hancock Hill. Oh, okay. and for anyone who goes hiking with any now, regularity. What's this one over here in the corner? Is that a pheasant? I'm I'm not sure. Is that it's looks a, like a pheasant? It looks like a pheasant. Oh, female. pheasant. Yeah. A I said pheasant. pheasant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the males are much more colorful. Well, that I have a story about pheasants uh, because my. Uh, it's a family show, you know. I know. No, it's this uh, when I was younger, living uh, down on Center Street in Randolph, we yeah. had one of these fly into our house wow. uh, and land on our front porch and during supper time. Oh. And my mother heard this thing go thump, 
against the house, went out to investigate, and accidentally stepped on it. And oh. I've never heard her let out a shout like she did oh, that night. Oh, so. wow. <laughs> and I was dispatched to uh, take care of the bird. The bird, unfortunately, <laughs> was very dead. Oh, that's, that's well, unbelievable. Steve, uh, Stephen, I thank you very much. Oh, this has welcome. been wonderful, and I really appreciate your opening up the site to us. Is this all we're going to spend with Steve? I'm afraid so, Ken. Our relationship is at an end. We need to go it's been such a onward. Pleasure. And yeah. you're, oh, you're a sharp young guy. I love this. I hate to say it, Ken, but from here, it's all downhill. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks again, Steve. Ken, we're back in Randolph, off of the, the, the main Nike site off of High Street. Well, it's good to be home. Isn't it? And yes. back on flat ground, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, good to be on flat ground. Yeah. Well, well, what is this now? What are we looking at Well, right we're this? now in the, uh, the location of the launch site. Remember when we were up on Chickatawbit Hill, I was telling you that we had two different sites, the command and control center, and then the main launch site. Right. And this is the main launch site. And this is a picture I, I downloaded off the web. Oh, wow. And showing uh, the launch site and some of the different buildings we're gonna see this afternoon. That's the way it was, yeah. Better yet, to guide us in our journey, I got a map. You got a map, I should have known. You would yeah, have had a map. Yeah, well, we're gonna be good tourists. You gotta have a map. Oh, look at that. And. So here we are looking looking down this, this road here right. towards the launch site is down the end of this road. Okay. And Where are we right now? Where's right the guard? now we are just gone through the gate. Right. And this is the, the security buildings, this this guard shack right here. Right. So if we were coming through here in nineteen the spring of nineteen fifty five, we would have been stopped by an armed guard here at the gate. Of course we have a gate going all around the perimeter and a fence around the perimeter of the site. Wow. And so this, you know, while it wasn't a top secret site, uh, people knew about it. And indeed, uh, I was talking to a resident of Upham Street on Sunday, and he was telling me that they actually used to have open houses here and you could tour around the site. They never no kidding, while it was an active site? While it was an active site. It was in the early 1960s. It was one of the problems with this, as I mentioned up on the hill, was that this was the, the last line of defense. And the, the Russians quickly discovered, uh, they, they, they perfected uh, ICBMs, okay. intercontinental ballistic yeah, missiles. Yeah, yeah. And so now these missiles that, we that rendered the, this missile site obsolete because they couldn't hit a missile traveling at supersonic speed. That's right. Now, I just want to stop right here. Yes. Now, see these steps going up, all painted yellow, very nice so you don't trip in the dark. This was where the barracks were for the soldiers that, that used to uh, serve the, uh, the missiles. You know, and this is, of course, the house is no longer here, but uh, this was a barracks building. It's about 100 feet long. Looked very much like the ones up on Chickatawbit Hill. This boggles my mind, Henry, you know that? To actually be able to touch history. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, it is, it is. This is where they live. This is where they and lived where and they worked. And, and where they worked. And, and where they, uh, yeah. like I mentioned before, this uh, they had the, uh, first they had the army here, and then they had the, uh, the National Guard. And they had two units of uh, field artillery. Gee, look at because this, even it? though they were missiles, they were still considered as anti-aircraft batteries. Yeah, look at the, look at the. Look and at so the, they were run by artillery companies. Look at the space here. This, oh yeah. You suppose there's anybody. Well, remember, you were telling us up on top of the hill about how, you know, when you're in the in the military, how a barracks building was a big open space. Well, this here's like your a, this big looks like open a bar barracks yeah, building. This looks like a barracks building with a red tile floor. Yeah, they still a little bit of floor. red red floor. You know, do you, do you suppose there's anybody at home that would remember this, Henry? Look at this. This is still the feels original. Feels like uh, linoleum this is still or, the original or, floor. or no? It feels like tile. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like tile. Now, do you suppose there's anybody at home that maybe worked here or? Was it oh, I'm sure there must be, still be some people living around town who either worked here or knew people who worked here. And uh, it would be very interesting to see who I'd else like might have from. some pictures. Yeah. yeah, I would give them your phone number, of course. Of course. <laughs>
or uh, contact the station, and uh, we can we we can always uh, we are always are keen to find out more about our history. Yeah. And the interesting thing about this site is it's it's part of our our local history. This this fascinates me. This but, map. But yeah, this is. Can I ask where you got this map? This, this is, I I got from a, a reporter for the uh, uh, the Mariner newspapers. Okay. And uh, or, excuse me, the Randolph Buzz. Oh, the I, buzz, the I remember buzz. it well, yeah. And, but we're standing right about here on this barracks building. Wow. You know, all of which remains now is just that, that little slab. Now, if we go a little further along, we can see where the missiles were prepared and uh, distributed out to the main launch sites. Henry, what the devil is that up there now? This, this is well, in the woods. Let's, let's pull out the map and have a look. Okay. Now, okay, we just came from the, uh, the barracks building, yeah. and now we are going up. That is the missile assembly and test building. Oh, let's go This is where they would have put together the, the Nike uh, Ajax. They were two different types of Nike missile that were used in this area as part of the anti-aircraft defenses of Boston. One of them, the one used here, was the Nike Ajax. It was a, a two-stage missile, looked like a giant-sized dart on a stick. And uh, judging by the photographs I've seen of them. Now, these didn't have atomic warheads. No, these didn't. The, the, the site here in Randolph did not carry atomic warheads. Okay. Um, and one of the problems with the Ajax missile was that it had a very short range. They could strike targets out into the Atlantic, but not very far. And they were afraid that the, the Russian bombers could evade them. So the, the uh, 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 longer range Nike Hercules missile was developed, uh, also a two-stage missile, and that was equipped, could be equipped with a nuclear warhead, and the idea was they would fly one of these into a cluster of Russian bombers and explode it and take out the whole bunch of them. Oh, my God. But goodness. you can see, again, like the, the, one, the site up on Chickatawban yeah. Hill, a nice cinder block, cinder block building. Right, right. Still uh, with its old roof. Looks huh? like people have been inside here, but uh, again, just a, a very open utilitarian space with a crane and. There's some bats flying around in bat, there. Uh, birds and critters flying mm -hmm. about inside. I'm not sure I'm going to go wandering around in there, but we can take a peek, I suppose. All right. Wow. But, but imagine, if you will, 50 years ago this spring, there'd be, there'd be uh, soldiers in here who would have been prepping missiles. Uh, they would truck them in one door, and they could assemble them here on a, on a cradle, roll them out the other door, and if we continue along here, you see there's a, a track here. Oh, probably yeah. Probably a caterpillar yeah. track that yeah. would uh, lead yeah. them out and carry us a little beyond here. There's a generator building here, and you can see that's hooked up. Wait a minute, slow down just a minute, Henry. Yep. I'm trying to assimilate okay, all this. Okay, yeah. No, I'm sorry. This is, this is the assembly point this here. This is the assembly that's point the here. That's generator building over there. So yep. They but rolled them out of here. Rolled them out of here. And down this track, apparently. Down this track. Oh, okay. And this, this building over here, according to the map, is a generator building. Right. And that probably provided the power for all the, the heavy lift equipment, because I yeah. got to imagine these things were of a oh, pretty. Oh, I would imagine they weighed well, quite a bit, yeah. They, they stood about, uh, about 20 feet tall. Now, are we going to, uh, were these underground? Are we going to see a silo? Or? No, no. These, these missiles were kept in, uh, well, they were, the missiles were kept underground. In uh, here, yeah, uh, not on this particular spot, but just around the corner here. This, you see, this this pile of dirt here. Yeah. Uh, the the Nike Ajax missile was fueled by a combination of a solid fuel booster and uh, a liquid nitric acid, if I recall correctly. It was it was a very hazardous acidic material, and apparently it was fairly unstable, prone to explode, and. Uh, the, uh, that's why the area where they loaded the rocket propellant around the corner here was uh, all enclosed in this, this berm. So if, God forbid, the missile blew up, all the, the explosion was going to go straight up this way. I see. And I not, see not damage any of the building. So this really is uh, not a sidewalk. It's a track. Yep. They used to roll the missiles on it. That's that's, that's right. Well, this, this is all heavy this, reinforced concrete. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so it's a, a nice that. thick, heavy slab. And they bring the missiles in here on the track vehicle, and they'd come over here, 
you could still see the crane that they could use yes, and, I and can. The, Look the, at that. The, the area. This huh. actually this trench was here in case they had a fuel spill. You're kidding. So you have a trench here with where if if they spilled uh, missile fuel that could go into this this hole here and, and be dissipated uh, or burned off. Uh, otherwise, they could continue on with with loading the uh, the the the, uh, the rocket fuel and allow the the missiles to be fueled in a safe location before take being taken over to the uh, launch site, which is just beyond this this, this berm over b just just past us. This crane, imagine again. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Boy, oh boy. I mean, you don't have to imagine anything because it's right here. Yeah. Look but just this. just think of the fact that uh, you have that you have where the the fuel lines would be coming in, and again they were they were loading a very hazardous fuel, and so they had to be very careful about what they did, and for that reason again the to, to reiterate the point that this was a site where they would load, and if if for heaven forbid, and we know of no instances where a missile ever blew up here, uh, there were no missiles that ever blew up. I was just uh, going to ask you, there, there were a few mishaps. No uh, mishaps as that a were kid, aware I lived here, yeah. and I don't remember any mishaps. Matter of fact, I don't even remember the Nike site, to be honest but, with you. But, I mean, if you look, you can see this was designed with, with an eye towards safety. See, now here's that trench we were yeah. just looking at. Yeah. Here is the, the acid fueling station. This, this is the fuel station. Right. And uh, it's... This uh, is an unusual piece of concrete over here, if I can, if I can get over to it without killing myself. It's it's a different shape. Well, it's sort of a little bunker, and yeah, again, that's exactly what it looks like. Now, why why would they do that? Well, Henry? because if they're storing a, a hazardous material, they, they want to make sure that it's going to stay there and not uh, blow mean, up. Or I mean, mean again, the... it it reiterates the point that this was a ha dangerous material. This was was you know. Fighting, fighting uh, the Russian bombers was dangerous business. Yes, uh, indeed. It's yeah. hard to believe that Randolph was on the front lines of the Cold yeah, War. Yeah, we don't I, think of that. I'm kind of proud of that. It's rather remarkable. Yes, it's a great heritage. I think it's important, Ken, to, to remind our viewers that this is a deactivated site. Uh, as I mentioned up yeah. on Chickatawbit Hill, this area was in active service from the spring of 1955, 50 years ago, up until about 1964. Okay. And so in 1964, they removed all the missiles, all no, the missile equipment. Nothing here that could hurt anybody. There's nothing here that could hurt anybody. They've removed all the jet fuel. They've removed all the, the acid fuel. And, oh my goodness. He, Henry, so, Henry, I can't get over. This so is the can, launch site. Here we are. This, this is, is the first this is launch site I've ever been on. And, and here's, here's wait, our wait, map. Wait, 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 wait. Can you... What in the devil is this? Is this, you sure all the missiles are gone? Oh yeah, that's well, what they told me. Then what is that? I haven't got a clue, Ken. I can take that oh, right Don't, don't, don't that. break the place for goodness sake. <laughs> look at sake. that, oh my word. Looks like, looks like some sort of conduit for, for electrical cable or something like that. Yes. Because you notice there's, there's another, oh, another yeah. connection over there. Oh yeah, be careful now. Henry. No, be yeah, careful. nope. And that goes down into a, it looks like a, uh, an electrical box. Yeah, that so goes this down. So this is probably part of the firing mechanism. That goes down kind of deep, too. You think this is part of the firing mechanism? I think it's part of the firing mechanism. And looks Look like there was some sort of structure here. But remember, these, these missiles, they were stored underground, and then they could be raised up and, and uh, unfolded. Uh, on their launchers and launched in a matter of uh, about 10 or 15 minutes uh, when they got the warning of uh, an approaching bomber. But here we are, and we're standing right at... Let me get on the other yeah, side. Yeah, get on the other side here. Yeah. But if you look, we have the, the different types of, of launch sites. This is where we are right this now. This is where we are right now. And you would have had a, a launch area here, and another one just beyond it, another one just beyond this. Each one of these launch areas had an underground storage uh, bunker that had 16 missiles. Wow. Each one had, so we had a total of 48 missiles on this site, wow. ready to go. Wow. In case, in case the Russians came over with the big one, as, as my uh, friends used to say. Yeah, well, I remember that. But you'll, you'll notice here, uh, these piles of dirt, well, what they did when they demobilized the site, of course, uh, they were concerned about the safety of the site, so they went and they filled in 
where all the rockets were stored. They took the, the rockets, uh, the missiles out, of course. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, today all we have left is these concrete slabs. I'm not sure what this, this uh, metal shed is that we see right over here. Henry, let me ask you a question. Yeah. As a historian, should this be restored, do you think? I mean... Well, it, you know, it is what it is, Ken. And there are lots of other sites. There is actually, believe it or not, there is actually a Nike Missile Historical oh, I, Society. I see something here. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta look. You know how I am. Oh, you I gotta, gotta explore. Look. Oh, you know what? I thought that was a drain. I thought this is an underground, out, out, uh, a shower or something, but it isn't. What'd you say this was? I'm, think? I'm not sure what it is. Okay. Whether it looks like some sort of protective structure. Maybe this is where they, they, uh, guided the, the missiles onto the Lawrence site. There's so, there's so much going on here. Well, so, you see, did there, you there are multiple... Did you answer me about restoring this historically? About restoring it. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you could restore it, but there are other sites like it across the nation. Uh, remember, we had 12 of these sites ringing around Boston, 20 around New York City, and each one of them had their own uh, sites and silos. Let's let's take a look over here, Ken. I see yeah. something sticking up above ground. Yeah, I thought I saw some railroad tracks. I didn't, did I? No, but you know what it is? Is it looks like they these were probably the uh, the doors. Yeah, it looks like a great big door that would open up. Oh yeah, there's, Ooh, there's this. This is not too safe here. Yeah, let's let's get off it yeah, then. Yeah, that's not too safe. It's let's a, stand on the concrete part. But you notice there's a hole there. Yeah. And it looks like there was a door that would lift back, and the the, the missiles actually were on their launchers, and the uh, they would kind up. It was kind of like a scissor lift, and that would raise the missile up to not quite vertical. They said they wouldn't raise them to vertical, in case something went wrong the missile would go up and out towards the ocean instead of going straight up. If you launched it straight up, yeah. something went wrong, it would go straight up, yeah. it would go straight down. Wow. That would be a very bad day for the, the guys would, launching the missile. It would not be a good day, you're absolutely right. But again, you can, you can feel uh, the power of this site by the fact there's this big expanse of concrete all around us and surrounding the actual launch area right here where the missiles were stored underground, raised up, and fired. And they could roll them out from, from I'm not sure how they got 16 missiles tucked down in there, but yeah. you know, it's, it, it, it's a remarkable it, thing. It, you can feel the power here, you're right, but you know, it's almost sad to think that what we went through in those days with the Cold War, mm -hmm. and the guys that served here, that's 50 years ago. These that's guys right. are now in their 70s and 80s that's probably, right. but they served their country well, even right here. Very in much so. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, well, this let's, is, this let's explore has been, just a little bit further yeah, up here, just to see what else we can find. What a great experience this has been, Henry. I, uh, I, uh, I don't know, I, I can't thank you enough. Well, actually, we should thank our viewers, because I understand that the reason we're doing this program today is one of our viewers made a suggestion to the station that they'd like to see us do a program on the Nike site. Oh, I didn't know that. And, oh, very much. That. Oh, that's great. Very, and that's great. I mean, as you know, some of our best programs have come through viewer suggestions. Sure, absolutely. And we welcome people calling the station, contacting us by email, and making, giving us their ideas. If they think there's a program they'd like to learn more about Randolph's history, yeah, uh, we'll do what we can to find out what we can. If you and hear that sitting at home, folks, you got an idea, call our CTV, tell them what you got. And we'll explore it, if it has any worth or any value to the town, to the people, to the viewers, we'll do it. Henry, I can't, I can't get over this. This, and you, that was a good word you used back there. You can feel the power oh, here, yeah. even now. And, and you think of, for example, when the, uh, they had the Cuban Missile Crisis, yeah. and we were on the brink of a nuclear war, that you can imagine the fellows that were stationed here in 1962, if this was still an active site, it would have been just before it was demobilized. But you can imagine, there were the ICBMs being launched, the Russians were still flying bombers up and down the East Coast, yeah. and you can imagine this would have been a place of high tension and, yeah, and, that's and right. worry. That's right. But that's you also right. notice here, again, we've got this high wall of dirt to uh, we protect. we got a fence around it. And too. we got the perimeter fence. Yeah. Again, we forget, in its day, 
this was an active military site. This yeah. was just as much a fort as was Fort Warren out in Boston Harbor. Yeah. Now you asked me the question earlier about whether we should restore a site like this. I don't know. There are still a number of, of bases like this around the country. Um, sometimes it's best to uh, leave a site like this, go back to nature. Sometimes, uh, if it can be restored, I would imagine it would cost an awful lot of money to do that. Yeah, that would be the problem. It costs a lot of money. You know, Henry, I, I, we've done a lot of walking today. I'm not even tired. I'm so exhilarated. Isn't it? But you can see all the different spots here, and you can imagine what this must have looked like when they had all 48 yeah. missiles out on their launch pads, out in this, this big expanse, ready to go. And we're walking here. Now, Henry, what the devil is that? I don't know. It looks like a big, heavy... Let's yep. see if we can big, turn, heavy yellow door. Oh my huh? goodness, you yep. can't even move that. Well, there's a latch. Oh, Let's get well, this I guess uh -oh, that's where what it goes. the devil is that? Hello? Wow. Look at that. That yeah. goes down for miles. What do you suppose no, that goes, is? Oh, that's where they, they kept the missiles under, underground. What a great spot to make pizzas. And they, they uh, that's that, that hatch we went by earlier, that's where they took them out from. Holy. And man. raised them up and then brought them out here to fire them. Jeez. But you can see, look at all that, the thickness of concrete. I mean, yeah. this thing, this was going to take a, a direct hit from something. That goes down there about 20 feet, 15 oh, yeah. feet. I'd love to go down there. You want to go down? Wow, what a big room this is down here. I mean, this is the area underground where the missiles would have been stored. What's that on the wall, Henry? No, I think that's the electrical panel, Ken. And you suppose they launched from right from here, right well, from where we were standing? Could, could very well be. They'd bring them out. They'd, they'd, of course, remember, they were keeping 16 missiles in each one of these uh, bunkers. Yeah. And, and with all that concrete, they were pretty well protected. But this and then they'd bring them up, up that elevator we saw earlier, up, up through the, the hatch, and then they'd launch them from up above ground. But this room, do you suppose they slept here and uh, ate here? And, uh, no, I, I think they slept in the barracks, but they probably launched them from here, and that's probably what this electrical panel is all about. working down here all day, every day. That's got to be awful. It was... <laughs> well, remember the conditions they were working under. Yeah, yeah. And remember the, 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 the time it was and the threat they were under. They were probably, if uh, during the missile crisis, this was probably the safest place to be. And look at the water here. Look at all the oh, water. Oh, there's a lot of water yeah. there. But, but I remember, again, it's 50 years on. They probably had pumps to deal with this. Remember we were going by earlier. We saw an air shaft. So they could have stayed here if they had to. But I suspect... Uh, they probably work this in shifts just like any other guard shift. Yeah, yeah, this this has been exciting. I got to tell you, this is really, this really is, exciting. Let's get I out I was going to say this is over the top, but this yeah. probably goes down below anything we've ever done. Absolutely. Let's get out of here. All right. That kind of stuff fascinates the heck out of me. Isn't that amazing? There's a lot of Tom Sawyer in me and a lot of Huckleberry Finn in you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was well, great. That was just superb. Fantastic. Are you going to take me to another interesting spot? Well, we got one more spot to visit today, Ken, and that's where uh, we've talked about where they controlled the missiles from. We're here where they launched the missiles. Yep. And then we've got one more spot where the people lived who tended the missiles over the years. Okay, Ken, we're now at Army Street, and this was also built around the same time. We're not going to go down the street. We can't. It's government housing. Right. And we should respect that. Yes. But you can see here, as we look at the houses on this side of the street and looking down the street, you'll notice that this was is uh, typical of, of 1950s uh, style housing development. Yeah. Uh, you see it in a lot of the subdivisions here around town. This just happened to be for Army families. It's still owned by the military. I believe the Coast Guard uh, manages it today. And they still have families uh, staying here. Ah, oh, well, but this has nothing to do with the Nike site, does it? Oh, it has, was built at the same time as the Nike site, and the houses were built at that time. This is where uh, the officers would have stayed. It's where uh, soldiers with families would have stayed. Oh, I see. And so, hence the name Army Street. Right, right. That's why they, they built the housing right here. Uh, it was midway between the missile site there I imagine a lot of the people who lived uh, or worked up on Chickatawbit Hill probably lived here as well. Oh my goodness gracious, this, that, what, what a day this has been. Isn't it remarkable? Yeah, it is so, remarkable. I mean, I think we have uh, had a very full day, I have, absolutely. learned a lot about uh, an aspect of Randolph's history that a lot of people probably didn't know about. And 
we get to see a lot of interesting uh, landscape and uh, real estate in the process. Absolutely, Henry. Ken, as always. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to be so with you. So I'm not sure what we're going to do to top this one, but right we're going to have to figure out another program. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. Yeah. Ken, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Well, that's it. Another episode of Beneath the Elms with my very good friend, Mr. Henry Cook, who has been extremely glib and articulate today. He's just fantastic. I hope you enjoyed it. We certainly enjoyed bring, bring, bringing it to you. And uh, I just want to thank you for letting us into your homes and into your hearts. We'll see you again. Remember, this is all brought to you by RCTV, channels 8, 10, and 22. Until the next time, I'm Ken Simmons.